Telford is an overspill of Birmingham, and such a new town that it only acquired its name in 1968. It's a place with its fair share of areas of deprivation and accompanying social problems. What has transformed one of these areas is a brand new school with a children's centre. It's called Newdale Community Campus and it's become the focal point of this community. We need to keep sight of the fact that we are agents of social change and that what we do can make a difference to lives, not just to the children that we work with, but the families that they come from and the community around them. Seven years ago, before the school was built, there were many social problems and community spirit was in short supply. The Overdale estate was um, very run down. It was built at a time when people, the priority was to house people, so there were lots of houses put up, but there were no shops, there was no bus service, there was no local school for youngsters. It's the last place on earth that um, people wanted to move to even if they were homeless, it was as bad as that. Head teacher Nick opened his doors to just 13 pupils in 2003, having secured the backing to establish a new children's centre as well. The whole ethos of the children's centre, the first of its kind in the country, is to offer a range of services for the young, the very young, and the slightly older. Education and support are provided at the revamped community centre at the main school, and even in people's homes. We really wanted to involve as many people as we could. We wanted to engage with the local community, so obviously children and families, but also anybody else that would work with children and families. So we had meetings with all sorts of people from the police, um, health obviously, social services, Sure Start, obviously we're a major player in it all, health visitors, um, local parish council, highways department. There were all sorts of people. It seemed that we were having meetings with every man and his dog, really, um, throughout the course of the first year or two, really, in terms of planning and setting everything up. That's my auntie Lynn, and that's my mum when she was 11 at school. 1982, that's like all our yesterdays, that is, isn't it? Fantastic. It's important to meet and engage with the parents at the gate, find out what they want, how they're feeling about the services that we could offer, and what they'd want to use. So we then set up a breakfast club as a result of talking to the parents at the gate. Um, we knew what time they wanted the breakfast club to start at, how much they'd be prepared to pay, and as a result the parents have flooded in with their children using the service, and it's really highly regarded. They love the service and, uh, and the children have a really healthy start to the day. Nick, the head teacher here, has been um, a real force to be reckoned with. Really, he's um, got a real vision um, for not just for the school, but for the for the wider community. Um, he really understands how partnerships work together with children's centres and primary care trusts and other partnership agencies as well. So I think that's really important for a, for a school um, and for a children's centre to work together. He's having the head with a vision, and Nick certainly got that. And it's Nick's vision that led to an outstanding report from Ofsted. Not bad for a relatively new school, which also has a higher than average proportion of children with special needs and disabilities. Robert and Alison have four young children and one on the way. Their eldest two attend the primary school. Have a good day at school, server. Bye. Kai is aged three and goes to the nursery, which is next door. And Zach is now at the baby unit, which is based at the revamped community centre, a two-minute walk from the school. As part of Newdale Children's Centre, we have a 0-3 nursery at the Carpenter Family Centre. We've got places for six babies and for 12 twos to threes. Morning! Morning! Morning. You got to run? Let's go. Yay. Zach loves you, and we, when we walk through the doors, that's it, he's off. Or we'll wait by the main door there and wait for us to get there, press the buzzer, and then he's off getting his coat off, if he can. It's a nice big spot. Here at the 0 to 3 nursery, we've got a lot of working parents, but also we have assisted places, either from a referral from an outreach worker or a, a health visitor. Um, we've also got two-year-old funding, so we're able to reach out to, to lots of families that wouldn't ordinarily 
use the, the service here. At Newdale, we've got three, three and four year olds. We have the grant funded places and also we have the wraparound care as well. So we might be able to extend the children's nursery times. So it makes it easy for parents to look for work. Hello. Hello. We try and support all the families and obviously every family and every child is an individual, so they're, they're going to have different needs. You say bye bye? Yeah, okay, quite. <laughs> Charlotte is the nursery manager. Although she works closely as part of the school team, she's got a contract with Integrated Child Care Services or Children's Services, which is part of the local authority. So we work very closely together so that we can link up services, not duplicate services as well, that's really important, that there's a consistent service offer across the whole campus. Have a look. I think it's nice, I mean, it gives him something else to do. Because in our house, there's nowhere for him to really paint. And when we, if we do get them to paint, then it's everywhere. At least if it's up here, it's all controlled and everything else like that for us, so... And that way, then it gives him something to bring us home. Because when he stands there, don't even his piece of paper, and he's got like a ten foot smile across his face. Good boy. Is that look what you've made? You're gonna give that to mummy later. When the children start here at the nursery, then we're helping support the parents um, by establishing a routine for the children, giving them some stability and letting them access lots of um, activities that they might not ordinarily use at home, encouraging their social skills and their independence and also helping them, support them in their preparation for school. Are you ready? One, two, three, up we go! With Zach being here, we know when he turns three, he'll automatically be placed in for the new school. And we're hoping when this one's born and about two years old, it'll get into this place as well and then keep it going that way. At the primary school, while the children are in class, some of the parents are as well. So writing is about communicating. Family learning classes are run during the day and a starting point can be something as simple as organising the weekly shop. How did you go about doing your shopping list together? would shout out what we wanted, beans, spaghetti. So there was a good communication yeah. between the two of you there, so you were negotiating what you were doing. Do you yeah. argue about what you're going to put on your shopping list? I want to go down a certain aisle, and I'm not allowed because I'm on the diet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Family learning courses are set up in schools, um, What the aim of which is to work with parents um, sometimes carefully targeted parents, parents who are uh, less able themselves maybe and who feel not so confident about um, what they're doing with their children. So basically it's giving them information about what the children are doing in school and giving them strategies and games and things to play with at home to help their children develop. But it's also about their own learning. Um, they, they have an opportunity to go on and go for qualifications and actually to develop their own learning skills as well in literacy and in numeracy. You get to like learn like what the kids are doing at school and different paces that they're at. So basically we're not like trying to force them on, we're just helping them out with the, what they need to know and how we help them do it. At the moment Caitlin's having trouble with her handwriting, so doing the classes here has helped us out with Caitlin. Caitlin is in the same class as Eddie, and Eddie's mother is a newly qualified teaching assistant. Eight, ten. Well done, sir. Her success is due to the adult training and support she's received while her children have been at Newdale School. In the early days of the nursery, I would go along with my three children and I used the facilities that was available, which enabled me to gain some qualifications because um, I left school with none, um, which changed my life and I've moved on since then and did more and more and I got more confident, did a few more. I then went to college in the evenings and gained a teaching assistant certificate which enabled me to actually be a qualified TA and it's changed my life for the better. Because we're using the systematic approach. Jane typifies really the relationship that we like to have with families in the area. 
she's well liked by everybody, well regarded by everybody. The children think she's great. The staff all relate really well to her. Um, she's one of those people that's part of the heartbeat of the place. She's, she's fab. Several of the courses Jane attended were at the Carpenter Family Centre. Next door to the baby unit is a community hall which is booked by many social groups. The senior citizen bingo players are regulars, and so are the local police. We come once a month and we come and join in. And as I found out to my cost, for the first few times that I used to attend, I'd, I'd roll up at about 10 o'clock and say, hi everybody, how are we all? Have you got any problems? And I'd be met with absolute daggers because it was sit down, it's bingo time. <laughs> And when the bingo fun is over, it's the parents' and toddlers' turn to play. Playing together is a key part of our children's centre um, delivery um, here in Newdale. We've worked really hard at making sure that children um, have access to messy play, to noisy play, activities that they would ordinarily perhaps not have access to. Lots of parents don't have the time to prioritise play, particularly where families have lots of complex needs, lots of pressures around debt and, um, and housing issues. It really gives some sanctuary, really, to, to parents a different kind of support is given to families out in the community. There's a network of outreach workers who make home visits. Jo Trahan has been helping Robert and Alison over the last few weeks. Can I come in? Yes, come in. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. It can be quite chaotic when we're going to visit families. They can have large numbers of children and other people in the household, so it's really trying to sort of work with the parents to get them to understand that we need a, a bit of space, especially with speech and language, which is what I'm focusing here. You know, we need to make sure the television's not on, that there's a clear space and that we can hear people. Should we build a tower? Zach's two, um, and I'm focusing this piece of work on Zach's speech and language needs. And just to sort of assess where he is on the sort of speech and language spectrum so that I can set up some exercises to do and try and incorporate it in a fun way. Can you see all the different shapes? There's a square and a triangle and build another one. Every Child Matters agenda is obviously on everybody's lips at the moment, but I think we'd like to say it's about every individual matters. It's not just about children, it's about their families as well. If we're supporting the families, they're better able to support their children and give them as good a start as they can. And if we look after the whole team at Newdale as well, they can give the children as good a start as possible. Everybody associated with this school are all working for people to become successful in their own eyes. And that has lifted this community um, to a, an extent that I would not have thought possible in so short a time.